hello my name is Chloe welcome to my channel today I'm bringing to you my January book haul so this is a video I'm actually pretty daunted to film there are 42 books here which is genuinely ridiculous and it's all thanks to you absolutely lovely people and the lovely people in the bookish community who've been so lovely to me for my birthday I have not deserved it at all um I'm so grateful, so, so insanely grateful. So what I'm gonna do is split this book haul down into books I bought with my own money, books I bought with Christmas money and Christmas vouchers, um, non-birthday gifts from people in the community and birthday gifts. <sighs> Let's just get started. <laughs> Actually, before I do, I just wanna say again, a massive, massive, massive thank you to anybody who has bought me a gift. Also, I'm filming this on the 30th of January. There are a couple of people who've reached out to say presents are on the way, but they're not quite here yet. Um, I know of a couple other books that are coming my way, but we hit 42 books. Um, I was gonna film this yesterday after work. I waited until the light is out today. Um, I just need to get it filmed and get these books put away uh, because it's taking over my room. <laughs> Um, also, let's just address, I'm not dressed nicely, I haven't done my face, I haven't done my hair, I'm wearing my Illinois um, hoodie that my sister got me for my birthday, I'm feeling cosy, I'm feeling loved, so yeah, let's just get on with this book haul. Okay, so first of all, there are three books that I bought fully with my own money for no reason. Um, the first one is The Binding by Bridget Collins. So I managed to get my hands on one of the gorgeous hardbacks. Here we go, look at it. Um, and I actually got this on Bookswap. So as always, Bookswap is linked down in my um, description. It is a book swapping website where you list books that you are unhauling. If somebody orders a book from you, you are given like a free postage label and um, you earn a point. And when you want to buy a book from somebody, you use a point and spend about three pound on postage. So I managed to get this book because I didn't have any points at the time. I got this gorgeous hardback for £6.50, so I couldn't let it go. I actually don't know much about what this is about, apart from the fact that everybody loves it. So when I saw this gorgeous copy go in, which I know they're difficult to get your hands on, I just had to grab it. Next, we have a book I specifically bought for Polathon, and that is Even the Darkest Stars by Heather Fawcett. Um, I don't know too much about this, apart from the fact it's one of Jade's all-time favourite polar fantasies. So I will be taking part in Polathon at the start of February. I'm pretty sure this video will go up after Polathon is even finished, which is mental in my brain, but scheduling. Um, and this is for my IC Magic prompt. You'll get more thoughts on this in my February wrap-up because... I'm going in quite blind. And the final book I ordered was actually a pre-order that came in in January, so it counts in January to me, and that is A Vow So Bold and Deadly by Bridget Kemmerer. This is the third and final book in the Curse Breaker series. It came out on the 26th and I had it fully finished by the 28th, I wanna say. Um, so yeah, I have the Waterstones exclusive edition. I had to pre-order it, I had to get my hands on it as soon as it came out. I'm in love with this book. It was a five star, but you will hear more of my January wrap up. No, that would have already gone up. Go back to my January wrap up, I'll put it in the description. Now I have the books I purchased with um, Christmas money, Christmas book vouchers. The first one is another one that I'm going to read in Polathon and that is Rebel Rose by Emma Theriault. So this is a um, what happens after the Beauty and the Beast. It says the curse is broken, now Belle must rise to become queen. Don't know too much about it apart from the fact it is definitely a YA I've been told I think it's on the same level as the Twisted Tales where it could sort of be advertised to younger audiences but it should be in the YA bracket I love Beauty and the Beast it's my favorite Disney story so anything Beauty and the Beast retelling wise I'm gonna jump on it another book I decided to grab while I had a voucher was Queen of Air and Darkness by Cassandra Clare this book is a brick. This could genuinely hurt someone. Um, I got this. This is book three in the Dark Artifices series. I haven't started reading the Dark Artifices yet, but I am slowly making my way through all of Cassandra Clare's works. And every time I have a voucher, I decide to get the next one that I don't have. Um, so yeah, Queen of Air and Darkness. It's taken up a lot of space. So come on, Chloe, we need to catch up on Cassandra Clare because this could hurt someone. Then I bought a book so that I could take part in Tog Along, and that is The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J Mass. So I'm actually behind on reading this. I was supposed to read it in January, ready for the January live show, but I couldn't fit it into my TBR. So I pushed it into the start of February. I'm gonna read it straight after Polathon and then go back and watch the live show. 
These are novellas about our main character, Selina, from Throne of Glass, um, how she was an assassin be before Throne of Glass, and it apparently ends exactly before Throne of Glass starts. There is a lot of stuff about Throne of Glass that I wanted to know the backstory, so I am very intrigued. Next, uh, one I had on my radar for a while, and that is Hex by Thomas Old Hoovelt. We have a review from Stephen King that says this is totally brilliantly original. Um, and this is about a town called Black Spring. Um, a 17th century woman with sewn shut eyes and mouth walks its streets, enters its homes, enters its homes, watches its people while they sleep. They call her the Black Rock Witch. So accustomed to her presence, the townsfolk often forget what will happen if her eyes ever open. To protect themselves, the Black Spring elders use high-tech surveillance to quarantine the town. Frustrated with the lockdown, the town's teenagers decide to break the rules and go viral with the haunting, but no one foresees the dark nightmare that awaits them all. So I think I've heard that there's like co constant social media coverage of where the witch is and like what she's doing, um, which just sounds really, really intriguing to me. Um, Brittany is also intrigued by this one. So keep your eyes open for the next Sisters Approximately announcement because I'm pretty sure it's going to feature on there. I'm getting out of breath from talking. I might need to take a break halfway through this. The next one I bought myself was Alice by Christina Henry. Um, all I know about this is it's a dark retelling of Alice in Wonderland. Uh, I won't read the whole back, there is quite a lot. In a warren of crumbling buildings and desperate people called the Old City, there stands a hospital with cinder block walls which echo with the screams of the poor souls inside. In the hospital there is a woman. Her hair, once blonde, hangs in tangles down her back. She doesn't remember why she's in such a terrible place. Just a tea party long ago and long ears and blood. That's all I'm going to read. Um, it is relatively short. It's uh, about 300 pages, I believe. Uh, just 325, so it's quite short, really. It feels tiny. Um, but I feel like this is just going to be a nice, dark, nice, dark, fun time. It's going to be dark. It's going to be haunting. I've heard very mixed things. And yeah, intrigued. So we're still on the Christmas money, just to keep you updated. The next one I have is 13 Treasures by Michelle Harrison. Um, I've grabbed this because Emily got me 13 Curses for Christmas, which is actually the sequel to this. And it, it doesn't obviously say it by the book. Um, so I decided to go on a discount book website and get this for a couple of pounds just so I can actually read that one. Um, and yeah, this, to be honest, I don't know anything about it and I'm going to go in blind. I believe it's a middle grade is all I can tell you. Um, so yeah definitely intrigued. Next we have Hetty Feather by Jacqueline Wilson. This is another one, discount book website. I bought 36 Jacqueline Wilson books um, without knowing what ones were included and we had books two to five in the Hetty Feather series but we didn't have Hetty Feather so I just grabbed this while I saw it going cheap and I had like book money to spend um, so that I can finally read those other books when I get to it. I don't know anything about Hetty Feather just that I avoided it when it came out and I was a child. Um, yeah, it came out in 2009. So I just left primary school, just started high school and I avoided this book like the plague and I don't know why. Um, but yeah, I own it now. So eventually I'll get to it. Next, we had a book that I simply had to buy following one of my favourite books of 2020. And that is Eight House by Sarah Gruen. This is the author of Water for Elephants, which I absolutely loved. And this is actually about Bonobo. 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 I never know the right way to say it. Bonobo or Bonobo chimps, um, which are my favourite type of chimps. Um, it says, what happens when you take six extraordinary Bonobos who know sign language, a scientist who understands and likes animals more than people, animal rights protesters who liberate the apes, apes right into the hands of an unscrupulous TV producer who produces a reality TV show that becomes the biggest phenomenon, phenomenon, God, I've been talking for too long, in the history of modern media. Um, so... Animal lover Sarah Gruen spent some time researching bonobos at the Great Ape Trust in Des Moines. I wish I would have tried to say that now because I definitely said that wrong. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love these animals and I love Sarah Gruen's writing. So I'm sure I'm going to love this. Two more and then I am taking a drink break. Jesus, I've been... This is too long. <laughs> okay, so this one I actually bought... Um, I don't really... Was it with Christmas money? I, I guess it. I can consider it was. This I got when I was doing my pre-order of... Um, of I was so bold and deadly, I wanted to spend a certain amount to get free delivery because I'm cheap. Um, and that is I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. Since buying this, I've heard very, very mixed reviews, but going in, I was so ready. Um, one of my favourite true crime podcast 
like teams read this before doing their podcast um but this is all about the hunt for the golden state killer i know that molly i don't know whether she finished it i know she started reading it and it made her really uncomfortable which I feel really bad for Molly, but I want that feeling. I love books that make me feel uncomfortable. One of my favourite books of January, it got five stars because I felt uncomfortable. So I feel like this is going to be a good time. I really do enjoy true crime. So any other way that I can branch out into true crime, I'm going to take it up. So let's see if I like this. And the last one I have here is another middle grade. And it is the name of this book is Secret by Pesedimus Bosch. Um, I've definitely said that better in the vlog where I hauled this one. Um, this is, I remember reading it as a child and thinking it was the best thing I'd ever read. It says, warning, do not read this book. For amongst its strange and alarming contents, you will find two extraordinary adventures, a missing magician's diary, a symphony of smells and a deadly secret. But wait, you already know too much. It is too late. I'm afraid nothing will stop you now. Open the book if you must, but please tell no one. And we start off with warning, do not read past this page. Good, now I know that I can trust you. You're curious, you're brave, and you're not afraid to lead a life, lead a life of crime. So very, very intrigued. I remember thinking this was the best thing since sliced bread when I was like 12. So it, hopefully it lives up. Right, we've had a quick hydration break, so let's carry on. I just have a couple of presents here that I wanna talk through. And these are from absolutely lovely people who just decided I needed a gift and I I can never repay that it's I'm so so grateful the first one I got was Spark by Alice Broadway and this came from Tracy so thank you so much again Tracy um she knew that I was going through a bit of a hard time um I was missing Cole there was some stuff happening here which I cannot for police reasons go into <laughs> um my family are all safe ish now it's fine um, but yeah, I was really, really scared. I was really worried and Tracy decided to reach out and provide a book for my stress and really put a smile on my face. Spark is the sequel to Ink. Ink was one of my favourite books of last year. Um, it's a world where when you die, you have tattoos all over your body um, that you get during your lifetime. And when you die, your skin is flayed and turned into a book so that everyone can look at your tattoos forever. It's so interesting and I, I can't wait to see what book two has. Um, the blurb is just, there are always two sides to every story. So can't wait to get to this one. We then have a gift from Claire. I should probably say at this point, I don't think I've mentioned anyone's names apart from Tracy so far. If I say somebody's name and I'm aware of their social media, they will be linked in the description um, so that you can go check them out. So the next one is from Claire and that is Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. So this has been on my radar for a very very long time it's supposed to look like an ikea catalog and trust me it does um i can't find a chapter header now that's just perfect isn't it here we go it, it looks like a catalog um who have i heard recently was it victoria somebody has read this recently and was genuinely terrified and i want that feeling i want to feel the fear so hopefully i i do get it from this book Continuing on with lovely presents. I don't even know where to go next. Uh, next, we have Friend, I can't even say it, Friend Request by Laura Marshall, which I got from the lovely Chelsea. So I will link her Instagram. Um, she was just reading this one and liked it. I was reading a book that I thought she would like at the same time. So we did a bit of a book swap. Um, so this is, I won't go into too much detail, but Maria Weston wants to be friends with me. Maybe that had been the problem all along. Maria Weston had wanted to be friends with me, but I let her down. But Maria Weston has been dead for more than 25 years. So I believe there's a movie of the same name, which is a different story, but I think it's the same sort of premise. It says the most addictive thriller you'll read this year. Um, I am very intrigued by this. I am hoping to get it picked up pretty soon, uh, but... There's a lot of books here, so hopefully we'll read this one soon. And um, then I actually have a couple of books that turned up today, which I wasn't quite expecting yet, so I'm, I'm so grateful they're here. Uh, the first one is Since You've Been Gone by Morgan Matson. This is from Jade at JD Ray Reads. She was doing a bit of an unhaul, and I jumped on a few of the books before um, everybody else, so I own them now. <laughs> so this, as far as I'm aware, is just a YA contemporary um, Emily's best friend Sloane disappears almost without a trace. The only thing left behind is a to-do list. 
On it, 13 Sloan-inspired tasks that Wallflower Emily wouldn't normally do, and definitely not without her best friend. But what if completing the list could bring Sloan back? Dance until torn? Sure, why not? Kiss a stranger? Um, go skinny dipping? Wait, what? Emily only has the summer to check everything off Sloan's list. The question is, what will she find at the end of it? I really want to read this one in the summer. I feel like that would be such a good time. And yeah, I'm so grateful to Jade that I own this now. And um, the other book I got from Jade is To Best the Boys uh, by Mary Webber. She actually threw in the little fairy note like art and letter. And it is an exclusive like sprayed edges edition. I'm so grateful for this. I she Jade is too kind. Um, but yeah, I don't know too much about this. I'm not gonna read through it. Um, it's a fantasy, which is a slightly out of my comfort zone, but I've been getting so much more into fantasy lately that I decided to give it a go. Um, but it says, the task is simple. Donna disguise, survive the labyrinth, best the boys. So that's all I'm going to read. Uh, I mean, we can tell from the cover there is a labyrinth of some form. Fantasy labyrinth, I'm here for it. And thank you again, Jade. The final just because gift, where have I put it? It's Girls with Razor Hearts by Suzanne Young. This is the second book in the Girls with Sharp Stick series. And this is another one from the lovely Tracy because we love Tracy. So this was actually a congratulations on hitting 1000 subscribers gift. So I was so grateful about the 1000 subscribers anyway. I did not expect an additional gift. Um, but yeah, Girls with Sharp Sticks was one of my favorite books of 2019, I wanna say. Um, and I've been waiting to get the sequel and Tracy has facilitated that. So thank you, Tracy. This is one of the books, well, um, Girls with Sharp Sticks, which this one, um, is one of those I really don't think you should look into. I don't think you should even really know the genre before you go in, because if that anything, that's a spoiler. Um, but this is about a school for girls where they're trained to be perfect wives. It's very good. <laughs> As we go through this book haul, I'm actually trying to make sure all my gift notes are stuck in with washi tape. Um, so I'm getting some life admin done at the same time, which is fabulous. Now we're on to the birthday presents, which are just insane. I will never be able to thank the community for this many presents. It's insane and I love you all. Let's just start with that. The first one I have here is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. This was from Larissa and we met through uh, J.D. Ray Reads' Patreon. So she decided to be so lovely and get this one for me for my birthday. I don't know too much about this apart from everybody loves it. Um, it's one of those, I, I do want to go in relatively blind. The, the naked book is gorgeous. So if I just read the first sentence, it says, between life and death, there is a library. Everyone's been loving this. I want to love it too. Next, we have another book from, from Larissa, and that is From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is one where I've completely hopped on the hype train. So as I said, I'm getting more and more into fantasy. This is a fantasy romance, and I've heard that the smut is next level. I'm not looking at the back. I'm going in completely blind. Um, it's huge, though. I didn't quite expect it to be this big. It is 600, over 600 pages. Um, but I've already heard amazing things about the sequel, so I need to get on this, like, immediately. Um, next, we have Air of Fire by Sarah J Mass, which was another one um, from a friend I made through Jade's Patreon. This one's from Jenna. Um, and yeah, this is book number three? It is book number three in the Throne of Glass series. So I know nothing about what's going to happen in this book. I haven't even read number two yet, but taking part in Togalong means I will eventually need to get to this one. So stuck it on my wish list and Jenna came through. So thank you, Jenna. Next, I have a gift from Jade um, from Paperback to Hardback and that is A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. So I only put this on my wish list because it destroyed Molly. Um, I don't even think she wants it bringing up this book because it, it really did destroy her. And I, I don't know how good it can be that that happens, but I need to be part of it. Um, it just says an extraordinary novel of love, loss and hope. I, I want to feel things. So I stuck it on my wish list. And Jade, thank you. Next, we have one that I will actually be reading really, really soon. And that is Winterwood by Shay Earnshaw. So this came from the lovely Bridget over on Jade's Patreon. Again, Jade's Patreon is just such a place of like warmth and happiness. I love it. Um, but yeah, this one, I, I don't know too much about it, if I'm quite honest. But it says, um, 
she said, happy birthday. I haven't tried this one yet, but it sounded like it might be good to have on hand for Polathon. So that's why it was on my wish list. I have read Shay Earnshaw before. I've read The Wicked Deep and I absolutely loved it. The writing was just gorgeous. So I decided if I'm going into a polar fantasy book that I'm not quite sure on, at least I know I love the author. So yeah, I'm very excited to get to this one very soon. Um, this one was a very pleasant surprise because I'm pretty sure it was the bottom item on my wish list. And I love when someone scrolls to the bottom first. So we have Words in Deep Blue by Kath Crowley. Thought I'd lost the note then. This is from Mal, again, from Jade's Patreon. Jade's Patreon is such a place of warmth. Um, this is a YA contemporary. It sounds very, very good. It is about... Um, Years ago, Rachel had a crush on Henry Jones. The day before she moved away, she tucked a love letter into his favourite book in his family's bookshop. She waited, but Henry never came. Um, again, not going to read more into it. It's very short, so I feel like much more is going to be a spoiler for the end of the book. Um, I believe there's like exchanging of notes in this, which I love in a contemporary romance. So might actually have to squeeze this one in very soon seeing as there is a colour in the title. Who knows? Next, I have one that I'm so, so grateful to finally own and I cannot wait to read it again. And that is Falling for the Cowboy by Kennedy Fox. I got this from Helen over at Helen's Book Haven. Um, this is about a, it's a smutty adult romance about a cowboy called Colton and a girl whose name I've completely forgotten. I don't know. Her name wasn't important in my reading. I, I can't remember... At, I want to say Claire. It wasn't Claire. Presley? That's not Claire, is it? Her name's Presley. Okay. Um, yeah. It is a small town American romance with a love interest with the same name as my boyfriend. Um, we'll say my boyfriend does not have baby blue eyes or washboard abs, but we can pretend for the sake of this of this story. And at one point in this, they do actually have a bit of a long distance relationship. And there were some really, really nice quotes in here about that. And I'm happy to have my own copy and I can annotate it and tab it and just love it. So thank you so much, Helen. Now I actually have a few books all from Emily at Novel Novels. So thank you, Emily, in advance. I'm just gonna talk through all the books. And um, the first one she got me is The Cousins by Karen M. McManus. I still have only read One of Us is Lying and I have all three of the One of Us is Lying like world. Um, and now I have this one too. This is a gorgeous copy. It has black sprayed edges. I am loving it. All I know is it is a YA mystery thriller. Um, the story family are the envy of their neighbours, rich, beautiful and glamorous until it all falls apart. The four children are suddenly dropped by their mother with a single sentence. You know what you did. They never hear from her again. Can't wait. Just can't wait. She also then sent me Snow White and the Huntsman by, um, I want to say Lily Blake. It doesn't actually say. Yeah, Lily Blake. Uh, this is a book based on the movie, which is a movie, which is a Snow White retelling. You know what I mean? Um, and it is like a badass Snow White. It's good. The movie has one of the Hemsworth brothers. I want to say Chris. It is. It's Chris Hemsworth. Um, it's a fun time. I am excited to read this because I absolutely love that movie and it's a pretty short book so I feel like this can be a nice easy read. And then she also sent me a book that she enjoyed reading and I thought it sounded like up my alley. It's not a genre I normally read but I feel like it's going to be a good way to branch into new things and that is The Silent Companions by Laura Purcell. Don't want to read too much into it again. It's a creepy ghostly thrillery thing I think. It sounded good when she explained it. It sounded good when Gemma explained it. So I have it now. We still have so many to go, you wouldn't believe. Um, the next one we have is The Poppy War by R.F. Kwong. Um, and I got this from Patsy. Of course it was Patsy. Um, so grateful to her for this. Patsy comments on a lot of my vlogs, maybe all of my vlogs, and she's just a ray of sunshine to always see in my comment box. So when she sent me a gift, I genuinely couldn't believe it. The Poppy War, I wasn't overly sure on whether I wanted to read but it is the read rate review pick for February I think um so I decided if there was any a time that I wanted to get round to it it was now a lot of people are absolutely loving it so and they're loving the series so let's give it a go Next, we have a gorgeous hardback, and that is The Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sapetis, which I got from Liena, so I was so happy to receive this one. She is also such a sweetheart. Um, she was on one of my reading sprints lately. If you want to go check that out, I will make sure it is linked down below. But she's such a lovely person, and she sent me this great book. 
I don't typically read historical fiction, um, but I believe this is YA. I think all of her ones are YA. Um, and I've read Salt to the Sea by her, which I really did enjoy. So I decided to give this one a go. I've seen it doing the rounds on booktube, so that it had my attention. Um, and yeah, it's just gorgeous as well. <laughs> Next we have a gift from Sarah at Septimus Snape and that is The Diary of a Young Girl by Anne Frank. I was never really sure whether I wanted to read this book but me and Brittany had a bit of a chat about it and decided we might make it a book club pick one month because it's something we both really like have considered reading but have haven't given each other the push to read it. So if we do it together maybe we can and um, I'm sure everybody knows what this is about. This is Anne Frank's diary from when she was hiding in the attic in Amsterdam um, from the Nazis. So I am really really intrigued actually um, to just get like a first hand account. Um, I don't know why I've never wanted to really pick it up so as soon as Brittany suggested it I just jumped, stuck it on my wish list, and thank you, Sarah, for facilitating. <laughs> Next, we have a gift that I genuinely couldn't believe when it turned up at my house, um, and that is House of, I can't, I can never say it, House of Earth and Blood, Crescent City, whichever the title actually is, by Sarah J Maas. So this was from Stacy. I still can't quite believe how this, why this is such such a treat to me like I'm so happy and um, I again was never a massive fantasy reader but I'm slowly working my way through Throne of Glass as you've seen and um, I'm loving how much of the Akatar series I've read so far and everyone says this might be her like best book so had to give it a try and decided to put it on my wish list in the hope that one day I would look at it and think yeah I'll buy it now and Stacey did it for me and can't believe it really. Um, next I have a gift from somebody and for some reason my list has mis mixed up the order of these and I don't want to go off in case I miss one. Um, so this is from Laura again I will link her in the description um, and that is Beach Read by Emily Henry. So this kind of was kind of wasn't a birthday gift she was unhauling it and was sending me a birthday card so I was like I'll take it please and um, so she stuck it in with that. This is two writers, one holiday, a rom-com waiting to happen. And I have read the back before. It is January, who is a hopeless romantic, and she writes um, like romance books. And then we have Gus, who is a serious literary type. Um, so they are both broke, they have crippling writer's block, and they need to write bestsellers before the summer ends. So then they bet to have a swap to swap genres and see who gets published first. It's going to be like a big romance story, really, isn't it? I'm so excited. <laughs> Next we have a gift from Alice and that is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. I I can't even keep saying thank you because it's just going to sound like I'm saying it over and over again but thank you, thank you so much. None of you ever need to get me a present. I was so shocked that this arrived um, and I actually I don't know anything about it. I know that it's an office hate to love romance and that's all I want to know. Then we got a gift from the lovely Emily at Emily Kathleen Reads. She got me Season of the Witch and um, one of the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina books by Sarah Reese Brennan. So these are based on the Netflix show and I absolutely love the Netflix show. So when I found out there were books, I added all three that are out onto my wish list. Um, and I will be getting to this very soon. If you don't know what Sabrina the Teenage Witch is about, please do. Um, please find out. But the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina is a re... re... Pop with it was a TV show. It's now again a TV show, but it's different. Um, a reimagining, I guess, of the Sabrina world. And it's a lot darker. And it's amazing. Um, I just checked Emily's note again, actually, as I was sticking it in. This is a prequel to the TV show. So that actually might be even more interesting than I originally thought. Okay, now we go back to my other present from Laura. And that is The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd-Jones. First, can we appreciate this naked hardback? It's gorgeous. Um, another one that I know nothing about. But somebody must have talked about it on booktube and I decided to give it a go. And um, 17 year old Rin cares about only two things, her family and her family's graveyard. And right now both are in dire straits. Since the death of their parents, Rin and her siblings have been scraping together a meagre existence as grave diggers in the remote village of Colburn, which sits at the foot of a harsh and deadly mountain range that was once home to the Fae. The problem with being a grave digger in Colburn though is that the dead don't always stay dead. So I don't want to read any more than that. I can't wait sounds so intriguing and it is gorgeous. 
Next, we have a present from the lovely Victoria, what Victoria read, and that is Hungry Hearts, um, which is a short story collection um, edited by Elise Chapman and Carolyn Tung Richmond. Again, another absolutely gorgeous naked hardback. I love the colours. Um, this is a YA collection of short stories um, that all revolve around food and or they're linked. They're all linked in some way and that way is food. Um, we do have a really, really cool map of all the different food places. Um, I feel like this is going to be an insanely good time. Victoria read it. She really liked it. And it was already on my radar then. But when she loved it, I decided I had to have it. <laughs> Next, we have the only present from my family, which was a book. Um, because my mom sent my auntie my wish list when she didn't know what I wanted. So she, she picked a good one. We have After the Silence by Louise O'Neill. I don't know much about this, apart from the fact I read um, Asking For It and I didn't love it. But then I remember somebody saying that this was like their favourite one of her books. And there's only ever yours as well, which I've heard of and haven't read yet. Um, and that's some sort of like breeding of robots. This one is about Nessa, Crow Nessa Crowley's murderer has been protected by silence for many years until a team of documentary makers decide to find out the truth. On the day of Henry and Keelan Kinsella's wild party at their big house, a violent storm engulfed the island of Innisfroon, cutting it off from the mainland. When morning broke, Nessa Crowley's lifeless body lay in the garden, her last breath silenced by the music and thunder. Um, it is really chunky, but the writing on the page is like giant. So I don't think this is as daunting as it originally does seem, but it's gorgeous. I mean, can I just say that all of these books are gorgeous? We have deep red on the inside. I love it. I, I keep saying I can't wait. If I couldn't wait for all of these, these would be my next month's TBR. I know it sounds, I'm saying the same thing over and over again, but I'm just so grateful. Okay, the final three now, and then I need to start finding places to put all of these. We have Tweet Cute by Emma Lord, which was sent to me by Rachel um, from Rachel Keris. This looks really, really cute. I've heard so much about it. I think I first heard about it from Heather at Book of Wars, um, but Rachel said this was one of her favourite books of last year. This is about Peppa and Jack, who have a Twitter war, basically, with their family's restaurants, um, like in beh on behalf of their family's restaurants. And it's a hate to love, but through Twitter with people called Pepper and Jack. Thought it sounded cute. I own it now. Next, we have a gorgeous gift from Shannon. I could not believe it when I opened this. She got me the cloth bound edition of Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. <laughs> Look at this. Look at it. It's gorgeous. Um, but yeah, I, I couldn't believe this. We all know what Frankenstein's about. I'm not gonna go into the, the plot. Um, I've never actually read Frankenstein. I wanted this gorgeous edition to like motivate me to read it. And I feel like it's gonna work. It's gorgeous. Thank you, Shannon. And the final one we have today is Lies Like Poison by Chelsea Pitcher. Um, this is pitched as for the fans of One of Us Is Lying. I loved One of Us Is Lying. I have another book by Chelsea Pitcher on my shelves. It's not going to be right in front, never mind. Um, it's a YA thriller. That's all we need to know. Thank you. Did I even say who this was from? I'm so sorry. This was from Rebecca at Rebecca Books. Um, I feel like I said it, but I probably didn't. So yeah, thank you so much. It looks really cool. We've got petals, we've got blood. It sounds great. Okay, that is it. That is 42 books that I got in January. I just know my luck that the Amazon man is gonna turn up in a minute and deliver a book and I'm not gonna add it onto this video, um, but it can wait. What I'm thinking of doing, there is no need for my February book haul to even exist. I should not be getting any books unless they are um, gift vouchers. I have ordered a couple with birthday vouchers and stuff. Um, and there are a few gifts which I know are on the way. So it shouldn't be too excessive. So I'm thinking of at least combining it with March because there should not be that many. Let's hope this keeps my book buying in check. My book unhauls are also really amping up because I need all the space to keep all these gorgeous new books. And so yeah, be on the lookout for new unhaul videos. Um, yeah, Pff, I need to lie down, take a breather. I've been filming for about an hour, which is ridiculous, but I'm just I'm just so grateful to all of you people and thank you so much and I'm not going to cry in the video but I I will in a minute so on that note thank you for watching this video if there are any books here that you think I should get to absolutely immediately then please do let me know in the comments thank you to you all again thank you so much for watching I really do hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one